and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. But the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. The Most High used the scriptures he asked his prophets to write and to preserve as a way to warn the future generations of prophecy that are set to be fulfilled. The Most High also used the scriptures to educate his people about his laws, statutes, and commandments. The Most High don't want his people to live in ignorance. The Father wants everyone to know him. That is why he selected the Israelite bloodline to be a light to the world. Because we live in a dark world that doesn't fear the Most High, the Satans have found ways to corrupt the seed of Adam as well as to disconnect the people that are made in the image of the Most High from their life source. Religion was the most effective way the Satans disconnected the Israelites as well as the entire seed of Adam from the Most High. Now that the prophesied awakening is here, the Most High is gathering the remnant to himself with truth. Everyone with an ear to hear will hear the voice of the Most High through the Holy Spirit. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The Most High have revealed a lot of important information the spiritual wickedness in high places was hiding for multiple years. The synagogue of Satan used religion to conceal the truth from the scriptures. I know some of you may be wondering, how did the synagogue of Satan conceal the truth? The spiritual wickedness in high places concealed the truth within the scriptures by altering the scriptures as well as not letting the scriptures speak for itself. There are countless scriptures that expose the doctrines of devils from religion. However, because the people don't read for themselves, they allow the disciples of Satan to do all the work. Therefore, the synagogue of Satan is able to blind their mind with their falsehoods in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israelites, this is why you can't rely on other people to work out your salvation. The disciples of Satan in religion encourage the people not to read the Bible for themselves. By doing this, it gives them the power to indoctrinate the people with their lies. To some people, the 66 books in the authorized Bible is all that they need to hear from the Most High. Some people don't believe the Most High can communicate to us in any other way but through the authorized Bible only. If they would read the scriptures, they would know that the Most High speaks to his people in their dreams and visions. Through your dreams and visions is how the Most High revealed the heart of the modern day kings of the earth. Your kings, such as Trump, Biden, and all the other world leaders in high places. Also, the scriptures let us know that the Holy Spirit will bring all things into our remembrance. Despite the scriptures revealing this truth, many people ignore the scriptures and depend on their pastors to lead them into all truth. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Some people refuse to accept that the authorized Bible was tampered with. 
The fact that the workers of iniquity refer to the Bible as an authorized Bible should let everyone know that the 66 books that make up the authorized Bible is not complete, nor is it the original. The scripture in the book of Enoch let us know that Enoch wrote over 300 books, yet the Bible consists of 66 books. Enoch was one of the many prophets the Most High used to write and preserve the truth as well as prophecy for the future generations. The synagogue of Satan managed to turn many people away from the book of Enoch with their falsehoods. Our fathers read and depend on the writings from Enoch to know the fate of their people. Dan, the son of Jacob and the progenitor to the tribe of Dan, prophesied to his children in his testaments that they will make Satan their prince. Dan received this information from reading the writings of Enoch. For I have read in the book of Enoch, the righteous, that your prince is Satan and that all the spirit of wickedness and pride will conspire to attend constantly on the sons of Levi to cause them to sin before the Lord. Dan informed his children that he read the prophecy about his tribe from Enoch's writings, confirming that Enoch wrote over 300 books. The modern day book of Enoch don't include the writings Dan read about his tribe. Therefore, the modern version of the book of Enoch that is available to the public is also incomplete. Today, we have Israelites and Gentiles denouncing the book of Enoch. They've allowed the workers of iniquity to deceive them. Everything Dan read from the book of Enoch concerning his tribe came to pass. For some people, because the tribe of Dan was not listed in the book of Revelation, they will ignore what the scriptures say and listen to the Satans that tell them to disregard the book of Enoch, as well as all the other books that wasn't included in the authorized Bible. I notice in the awakening, when the truth is being revealed, especially when the truth is exposing a popular doctrine of devil that deceived the world, many people will flat out ignore what the scriptures say to continue with the lies. For example, the scripture said in the book of Revelation that New Jerusalem was the bride of the lamb. The scripture went as far as to say New Jerusalem was the lamb's wife. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Despite the scriptures blatantly saying this truth in the authorized Bible about New Jerusalem being the bride of the Lamb, some people ignore the scripture to believe the lie of the modern day church to be the bride of the Lamb. Some people believe the Israelites are the bride of the Lamb. They accept this to be true despite the scriptures not supporting this doctrine. A bridegroom is a newly married man or a man that is about to get married. The scriptures refer to the Messiah as the bridegroom. In the parable about the virgins and the oil, the virgins went to meet the bridegroom. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. As you can see, the son of man was the bridegroom when the virgins went to meet him to attend the marriage ceremony. If the virgins was the bride, then they would be coming down with New Jerusalem to meet the bridegroom. The righteous will be standing with the bridegroom to see New Jerusalem, the lamb's wife. In the parable in the scriptures, it was the virgins that went to meet the bridegroom to be able to attend the marriage ceremony. Israelites, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. This generation is famous for ignoring what's in front of them to uplift lies from religion. That's the strong delusion at work in them. For some people, the pride in them won't let them admit that they have been deceived. Therefore, they will uplift the doctrines of devils to conceal their bruised ego. To the prideful Israelites and Gentiles, Satan have deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Everyone have been deceived. 
That is why we must unlearn the lies told to us in the B system. The truth have entered the world through the awakening. If the truth was in religion, there wouldn't be a need for an awakening. The B system's foundation is lies. There's no truth in the kingdom of darkness. Since Satan is the God of this world, you won't find the truth in the B system. That is why the Most High had to send the spirit of truth into the world for us to learn the truth. I've repeatedly shared with you the scripture in the book of Isaiah that said, The spiritual wickedness in high places have made a covenant with death, and with hell they are at an agreement. They have taken refuge in their lies and hide behind their falsehoods. It doesn't get any clearer than this scripture. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Under falsehoods they have hidden themselves. The remnant shouldn't be seeking the face of the Most High through any institution created by the synagogue of Satan in the beast system. The truth is not in them. Israelites and Gentiles, if you want to know the truth, you're going to have to look beyond the authorized Bible. In addition, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to bring everything into your remembrance because the authorized Bible is formatted in a way to confuse and destroy the people. You will need the Holy Spirit to fill in the blanks and to remove the alterations for you to understand the scriptures. Only the Most High can give you understanding. Without understanding, the doctrines of devils will prevail in the hearts and minds of many people. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. The synagogue of Satan purposely formatted the authorized Bible in a confusing way to keep you dependent on them for clarity of the scriptures. They also formatted the authorized Bible the way they did to uplift their gods and the kingdom of darkness. It's ironic that the Satans used the very scriptures to deceive the world. Israelites and Gentiles, that is why you need the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you and to tell you the things to come. We have to learn how to connect with our spiritual self because in the coming kingdom, we will live as spiritual beings. Right now, we are spiritual beings covered in flesh. Our flesh body won't exist when we inherit the kingdom to dwell in eternity with the Most High. Before we get into life in the kingdom, let us go back to what the Most High revealed to us as we reviewed end time prophecy. The Most High let us know that we have entered the time period where the gospel of the kingdom must be heard by all nations as a witness before the end will come. We are the generation witnessing the gospel being heard right now. It was prophesied at the end of the world, the Most High will separate the tares from the wheat. Let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The Most High revealed to us that the gospel of truth that is being heard right now is the harvest. And that is how the Most High is separating the tares from the wheat. Everyone who's hearing the truth and listening with an ear to hear are being led in one direction, while those who want to continue in the doctrines taught to them are going in another direction. The Most High unmasked the heart of the Gentiles as well as identify the nations. The Most High revealed to us that many false prophets will rise and the spirit of blasphemy will take over the heart and mind of many people. 
The Most High warned his people about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That sin is unforgivable. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. When you blatantly disregard the scriptures to uplift the doctrines of devils from religion, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. In the end times, the false prophets and teachers will perform great signs and wonders to deceive the people. The disciples of Satan will use the power they receive from the kingdom of darkness to perform the great miracles in the sight of many people to deceive them. The Antichrist spirit will dominate the heart and minds of the people who deny the truth. The scriptures let us know that the Antichrist spirit was already in the world. But at the end times, the spirit of the Antichrist will rise even more to deceive many. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. For have ye have heard that it should come? And even now already is it in the world. The scriptures identify the first beast as the Antichrist. There will be four end time beasts that will rise on the earth. The Most High let us know that the beasts that will rise on the earth are kings and kingdoms. These kings of the earth will receive their power from the dragon, which we all should know is Satan. The end time kings and their kingdoms that will rise are not followers of the Most High. The scriptures let us know that the Antichrist would declare himself to be the Most High. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. After the appearance of the Antichrist, the great tribulation will begin. The Most High revealed to us that the Great Tribulation is a time of trials and tests for the righteous. Many will lose their life during this time. During the Great Tribulation, the beasts will be in the world, and they will cause everyone whose name is not written in the Book of Life to worship the beast. Also, the second beast will cause many to have the name of the first beast written on their forehead or hand to buy and sell. The scripture is correct for calling that time period the Great Tribulation. Everyone alive at that time will experience tremendous hardship. The Most High let us know that the doctrine of pre-tribulation rapture is false. For the heavens are made for the children of the heavens, the angels. Each heaven is occupied. There's not a place for us to dwell in the heavens before the Great Tribulation. The Most High let us know at the end of the Great Tribulation, Michael will stand up to deliver our people. This is the deliverance we all have been waiting for. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. We will be gathered to our land. During that time period, the Messiah's judgment seat will take place in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. All nations will be judged. The people the Messiah promised to raise at the last day will rise to reign with the Messiah for 1,000 years. Before the millennial reign, the day of the Lord will take place. The day of the Lord is when the Gentiles will reap what they sow. The Most High would destroy the mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, along with all the nations that conspired against his people. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged you on her. The righteous will be given the opportunity to inherit the earth during the millennial reign. While the righteous inherit the earth, the Gentile nations will suffer the consequences for their actions. The Gentiles will be serving the terms to the judgments against them. 
This is also the time period where the Israelites will rule over their oppressors. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. After the millennial reign is over, the scripture referred to that time as the little season. During the little season, Satan will be loosed to deceive the nations once again. Satan will successfully gather a large nation of people. The scripture called this army Gog and Magog to fight against the Israelites and the righteous that dwell in the promised land and the lands surrounding Jerusalem. The scripture said that the Most High would destroy the large army, Gog and Magog, with fire from heaven. After the battle of Armageddon, the great white throne judgment would take place. All the dead that didn't rise in the first resurrection will rise to be judged based on everything that is written in the books concerning them. Everyone whose name is not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. After the second death, the marriage of the lamb would take place. The lamb's bride, New Jerusalem, will come down from the heavens into the new earth. The garden of Eden is where the righteous will return to live eternity with the most high and the lamb. And New Jerusalem is where the throne of the most high will be. The righteous will dwell in the garden of Eden in eternity. Israelites, I encourage you to review the prophecies written in the scriptures to better recognize the signs of the times. The scripture said, after the marriage celebration and the righteous inherit the kingdom, there will be no more pain, tears, and death. We will finally know what it means to live without oppression. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. The entire seed of Adam don't know what it's like to live without oppression. The Israelite bloodline has it worse than the other indigenous nations. However, collectively, we're used to being mistreated, oppressed, and overlooked in the B system. Life in the kingdom will be a total opposite to life living in the flesh. For some of us, we can't imagine a life without death, oppression, tears, and pain. The indigenous black people have been subject to trials and tribulations from the very beginning when Adam and Eve sinned. The Most High was correct when he said to Adam, you will surely die if you eat from the tree of knowledge and evil. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. I wanted to talk about life in the kingdom because a lot of Israelites have a false view as to what life will be like in eternity living in the Garden of Eden. The scriptures let us know that we will dwell among the Most High and the Messiah. We will be able to see their face. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. I look forward to being able to see the Most High and being able to dwell in the garden that was created for us. I want to see the beautiful city, New Jerusalem, that has streets made of gold and many precious stones. I look forward to serving the Most High and worshiping the Most High in the spirit in the kingdom. I look forward to living in my true nature. There's a lot of great things we should be looking forward to in the kingdom. However, there are Israelites and Gentiles that cannot look past their flesh. There are some Israelites looking forward to carnal things in the kingdom. I have heard on many occasions of Israelites bragging about having multiple wives and having young wives in the kingdom. They even created doctrines to please the lust of the flesh. I don't understand how any righteous person will look to how they could gratify the lust of the flesh in the kingdom. It's important for us to have the right mindset. 
Religion is not the only place you will find doctrines of devils. Satan will use his disciples in the awakening to create false doctrines. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. As you just heard in the scriptures, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Israelites, that is why you must understand spirit. We are spiritual beings covered in flesh. Our human suit is not made for eternity. Our flesh body is a temporary suit given to us to dwell on this earth. When Adam and Eve lived in the garden, they had a spiritual body that was different to the body we have now. Israelites, our flesh body will no longer exist. That is why our bodies will change. In order to live in eternity, you will need immortal bodies that is suitable to live forever. Remember, eternity is forever. The flesh body we have now is perishable. That is why our present mortal body cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Our mortal body is corruptible. But this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. The flesh desires are completely different from your spiritual desires. The flesh is carnal and it only wants to look for ways to gratify itself. Your spiritual body and the flesh have different requirements to sustain it. When Adam and Eve finally realized that they cannot enter the garden and the body they had was not fit to be in the garden, they stopped trying to enter the garden because they realized that the flesh body has strange functions and everything their flesh body needed to sustain itself could not be found in the garden. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done, and they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. Adam said again to Eve, What is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. And they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off and that they could not enter it. For that now their bodies had strange functions and all flesh that require food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. As you heard in the scripture, the new body Adam and Eve obtained could not live in the garden because the Garden of Eden didn't have the resources the flesh body needed to sustain itself. We was born into the flesh body. All we know is that the flesh body needs food and water to sustain it, as well as exercise to stay in shape. The human body cannot go no more than four days without water. Our body is made up of 60% water. We must drink water to be healthy. Adam said when he was in the garden, he saw the water, but he didn't have the desire to drink it for the spiritual body he had while he was in the garden didn't require the water to sustain it. Oh Lord, when I was in the garden and saw the water that flowed from under the tree of life, my heart did not desire, neither did my body require to drink of it. Neither did I know thirst, for I was living, and above that which I am now. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, no long discernment, nor upright feelings. Neither is our bright nature left us, but our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first, when we were created. When John had the vision of the new earth in New Jerusalem, John said there was no more sea. In his vision, John said the first heaven and this earth passed away. The first heaven consists of a large body of water that is greater than all the waters in this earth. In the new earth, there was no more sea. When we obtain our spiritual body, we won't need earthly water or earthly food to live in eternity. What our spiritual body needs to sustain it cannot be found in this earth. 
That is why the Most High made an alteration to Adam and Eve's body so that they could live on this earth. When we inherit the kingdom, we will obtain a body the Garden of Eden could sustain from its resources. The scriptures in the book of Revelation said that the nations would eat from the tree of life. Spiritual food is not the same with earthly food. Our spiritual body don't need a hamburger or a pizza to nourish it, nor does our spiritual body need to exercise to stay in shape. Our spiritual body is nourished from the words of the Most High. That is why the scripture said, man does not live by bread only, but by the words of the Most High does man live. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Israelites, I share this information with you to let you know that you won't be able to obtain your flesh desires in the kingdom. Also, the flesh body is corruptible. Many people have unclean spirits occupying them. The unclean spirits are influencing their life to no knowledge of the person who's being oppressed. The scriptures let us know that the human body can have legions of unclean spirits occupying it. That is why the lustful desires of the flesh are influenced by unclean spirits that occupy the person. The man in the tomb had multiple spirits occupying his body to the point he was acting erratic and cutting himself. The scripture said when an unclean spirit come out of a person, it searches for a place to live. If it can't find a new home, it will return to the person it was cast out of and bring seven other spirits more wicked than itself to dwell there. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. A person can have multiple spirits influencing their life. A lot of your thoughts and flesh desires come from unclean spirits. Right now, many sons of Israel are looking forward to multiple wives and younger wives in the kingdom because that is what their flesh wants right now. Life in the kingdom is not going to fulfill the lustful desires of the flesh. That is why flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Israelites, the time have come for you to have the correct perspective about your spiritual self. Your spirit is the real you. This flesh body is a temporary suit that is suitable for this earth only. The Messiah said in the kingdom, we won't be getting married. We would live like the angels. The angels don't get married. When the fallen angels allow lust to take over them, they procreated with the daughters of men. The Most High punished them severely. The children from the union of the fallen angels and the daughters of men was judged harshly as well. In the kingdom of the Most High, there won't be anything that can corrupt our spiritual self there. Israelites, nobody is getting married in eternity. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. The marriage ceremony took place before we entered the kingdom, remember? The righteous is married to the Most High. Life in the kingdom will be different to life in the flesh. We will never sleep in the kingdom. Our spiritual body doesn't require sleep. Right now, when we sleep, our human body remains sleeping on our bed while our spirit enters the spirit realm. Israelites, if you want to have an idea to what your spiritual body will be like, your dream life gives you a glimpse to your spiritual self. In the spirit realm, you can do extraordinary things. While your body is laying in your bed resting, your spirit never sleeps. It goes to the spirit realm. When the Most High communicate with you in the spirit realm, he's talking to your spirit. I hope now you can understand why the Most High doesn't operate in the flesh, nor does he do anything in the flesh. The scripture said we cannot please the Most High in the flesh. I'm not sure why anyone would be lusting for flesh desires in the kingdom. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
Israelites, the time have come for you to connect to your spiritual self. Any Israelite or Gentile thinking they will live the same kind of life they are living in the flesh in the coming kingdom are deceived. They need to repent and seek deliverance because you have yet to connect to your spiritual self. If you was connected to your spiritual self, lusting for multiple wives, as well as anything that gratify the flesh in the kingdom would be beneath you. The lust of the flesh wouldn't cross your mind. Many Israelites and Gentiles need to be free from the unclean spirits controlling them. Nothing that can defile the kingdom will be able to enter the kingdom of the Most High. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Repeating the things you did in the flesh in the kingdom is redundant. That is why there's no place for the flesh in the kingdom. In the coming kingdom, you will be awake all the time and you will never be tired. There won't be a need for you to sleep because in the kingdom, there's no nighttime there. The scripture in the book of Revelation let us know that there won't be a need for the sun or the moon. There's daylight all the time. The righteous will receive daylight from the glory of the Most High. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. When Adam and Eve was kicked out of the garden, they experienced night for the first time, and they had no idea what the darkness was. In the garden, there was daylight all the time. When the darkness came upon them, they were frightened. In the kingdom, there won't be 12 hours of darkness like we experience here on this earth. But in my mercy, I have made thee as thou art when thou did transgress my commandment, O Adam. I drove thee from the garden and made thee come forth into this land and commanded thee to dwell in this cave and darkness came upon thee as it did upon him who transgressed my commandment. Thus, O Adam, has this night deceived thee. It is not to last forever, but it is only of 12 hours. When it is over, daylight will return. As you can see, Israelites and Gentiles, life in the kingdom will be different to life on this earth. The nations that are saved, they will be able to enter New Jerusalem to bring their glory and honor. The scriptures reveal that the kings of the earth will bring their glory and honor. The Israelites won't be the only people living in eternity. The righteous Gentiles who are of the seed of Adam will be there also. The scripture said the kings of the earth. There will be kingship in the kingdom. Remember, the three gifts the Most High gave to Adam was kingship, priesthood, and prophecy. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. These are the three glorious gifts which God made to Adam. The first is kingdom, wherein God made Adam king over his works. The second glorious gift is priesthood, in that God breathed into his face a spirit of life. And the third glorious gift is prophecy, for Adam prophesied concerning what God thought of doing. The scriptures let us know that we will be serving the Most High in the kingdom. We shall see his face and we shall reign forever and ever. The scripture said there will be no more curse. The throne of the Most High will be in the midst of his people in New Jerusalem. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. I look forward to living in the times when there will be no more curse. The presence of the Most High is with us and we will know our God and we will be his people. Right now, in the awakening, we are getting to know our God. When we was trapped in religion, we were serving idols pretending to be our God. In the kingdom, we will know the Most High. We will be able to see his face. The people that will inherit the kingdom are the people who wants to do the will of the Most High. We will be serving him forever. To the Israelites looking to gratify their flesh in the kingdom, you won't be entering the kingdom of the Most High. 
If the desires of the flesh is what you're looking forward to in the kingdom, Satan have deceived you and you need to seek deliverance. The scripture is made it known plainly, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. The Most High's kingdom is of righteousness. The seed of Adam spent thousands of years satisfying the flesh. The time have come for you to elevate to your spiritual self. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. The moment the people of the Most High elevate to spirit, they will leave behind all the flesh desires. Unfortunately, we are living in a corrupt world. Despite living in those conditions, we have to let the Most High renew the spirit of our mind to cast down the wicked imaginations that want to satisfy the lust of the flesh. Life in the kingdom will be different to the life we was born into. Israelites, that is why we have to strive to walk in the spirit to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Life in the kingdom will be refreshing for an oppressed people. Israelites and Gentiles set great expectations for the coming kingdom. Make sure those expectations align with what pleases the Most High. The kingdom is for all who love the Most High and want to serve the Father in the Spirit. Israelites and Gentiles, don't let the disciples of Satan distort your view of the kingdom of the Most High with their falsehoods. Allow the Most High to renew your mind to get access to the kingdom the Most High have prepared for the righteous. Spending eternity with the Most High is better than the lake of fire. Israelites, ask the Most High to open your spiritual eyes so that you can receive with gladness what he has prepared for the righteous from the very beginning. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, 